bye-bye. Is Griffey trade me? And by the way, there's a wild card spot up for grabs. Hey, what about the pennants? The Astros home turf is a magnet for home runs. Everyone goes down in and run. Maybe that's why big guns like Bagwell, Griffey, and Hidalgo can't wait to swing. Welcome to the Lima Launching Pad, where the locals are heard to say, Houston, I think we have a problem. A summer slugfest, the Astros and the Reds, next on Fox Sports Net Baseball Thursday. Fox Sports Net welcomes you to Enron Field in downtown Houston, as the Cincinnati Reds hope to go chugging out of town with a two-game series sweep, following their 4-0 victory in the series opener last night. Everybody, welcome to Baseball Thursday. I'm Kenny Albert. I'll be joined in just a moment by Jeff Torborg. These are some of the stories we'll be following for you during the course of tonight's telecast. Trade rumors in Cincinnati. Are the Reds shopping Ken Griffey Jr.? And what about Barry Larkin? Houston Astros with the worst record in the majors after three consecutive division titles. And the Astros, Jose Lima, a 21-game winner a year ago. Their starter tonight, just two and 13. Jeff Torborg, as we check out our Fram standings, the St. Louis Cardinals are hearing footsteps. They are, because the Cincinnati Ball Club is starting to play as a team. In the middle of the order, they're starting to hit together. They're getting better pitching. But the one constant is Ken Griffey Jr. He's got 30 home runs, 78 RBIs. Even though he's hitting 239, he brings gold glove play to center field. He is the constant on this ball club. And the Reds will send Scott Williamson to the mound tonight. He will make his third start against the Astros, Jose Lima. The Reds and the Astros coming up on Fox Sports Net Baseball Thursday. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by American General Financial Group. Helping over 12 million people live the life they've imagined, live the life you've imagined. By Nissan, driven. By WebMD, the healthcare destination for you and your doctor. And by Fram, who asks, when was the last time you changed your air filter? Jeff Torborg back in Houston. The roof is closed here at Enron Field. Another 90-plus degree day in Houston. Cincinnati Reds, winners of two straight, eight of their last 11, only five and a half out in the NL Central. Third baseman Chris Steins leads off, followed by the shortstop Barry Larkin. Yes, he is still a member of the Reds. Ken Griffey Jr. bats third, Dante Bichette in the cleanup spot. Then first baseman Sean Casey, left fielder Dimitri Young, and the bottom of the order, Eddie Tobbins, Juan Castro, and Scott Williamson up against 27-year-old right-hander Jose Lima with a record of 2-13. and 13. Well, Jose Lima's had a struggle all year. What he has to do is keep all his pitches down. He's got a couple fastballs. His best pitch is a circle changeup. Got a little slider, but he's really got to work down. And the first pitch to Reds third baseman Chris Steins is high for ball one. Steins batting an incredible 457 in 56 games as he takes a call strike, one and one. This is 12th start since replacing the injured Aaron Boone at third for the Reds. And in the previous 11, as Steins falls behind on the count, one and two, he is batting 531. 26 of 49. Now two and two. Now that's where he's got a pitch down in the zone. He pitches with such emotion. And he's got two types of fastballs. The four-seamer is straight. The two-seamer is not a true sinker. It's got a little action. So he has problem up in the zone. Long foul down the right field line. So the count remains two and two on the Reds' leadoff hitter, Chris Steins. That's why he gives up so many home runs. He's very straight up in the strike zone. And when he gets emotional and tries to overthrow and get a little more on the ball, it straightens out, it gets up in the zone, and they tee off on him. That last pitch wasn't even a very good one up there. He strikes out Steins for the first out of the game. As we take you around the horn, the Astros defensively with Jeff Bagwell at first. Greg Biggio over at second base. Bill Spires at third. The shortstop is Julio Lugo. Moises Salou in left. Richard Hidalgo in center. 
Lance Berkman in right. Mitch Molesky behind the plate. So the battery of Lima and Molesky as Barry Larkin takes ball one. Larkin two for five with a home run last night. However, Larkin has been the subject of trade rumors over the last week, week and a half. His contract will expire at the end of the 2000 season. And team CEO John Allen issued a statement yesterday which read, the Cincinnati Reds want Barry Larkin to finish his career in a Reds uniform. However, Barry and his agent have demanded a three-year, $27.9 million contract, and they will not negotiate, they being Barry and his agent, from that figure. So the question is, will the Reds trade Larkin before the July 31st trade deadline to try and get something for him? Will they negotiate? Or will he leave as a free agent after the season? Larkin pops it up to the right side. Aswell has it for the second out. Well, we talked about Lima being such a free spirit and, and very emotional. He does so much on the mound. He shoots people out, but he never changes. Even though he lost 13 in a row, he never changes. I mean, he loves the fans. He has fun with what he's doing. He can't believe he's getting paid to play a game. And he really is an, a very interesting character, but he is really struggling at this point. His numbers are awful. But it hasn't changed a bit. We talked to him before the game. He said, I only can control me. I can't control the rest of things. Ball one to Ken Griffey Jr., whose name also popped up in trade rumors earlier this week, although the Reds deny that they have spoken with or will speak to any other teams about Griffey Jr. You know, as he fouls that back, I can't believe that they talked to somebody else about Kenny. He is so special to a team, obviously, and Jack McKeon is one of the first that will admit that even though their ball club had a great year last year and lost in the playoff for the wild card with the Mets, Ken Griffey Jr. is a real cornerstone to any organization. Fly ball right field. Berkman backpedaling makes the catch. A 1-2-3 first inning for Jose Lima. Jose Lima retired the side in the top of the first inning. We move to the bottom of the first. Astros 32 and 62. Worst record in baseball. Bill Spires, the third baseman, will lead off, followed by Craig Biggio, then Jeff Bagwell. Right fielder Lance Berkman in the cleanup spot, followed by the left fielder Moises Alou, batting 359. Richard Hidalgo bats sixth, then the catcher Mitch Molesky, shortstop Julio Lugo. And the pitcher, Jose Lima, up against 24-year-old right-hander Scott Williamson making his third consecutive start after 100 relief appearances over the last two seasons. Now, Kenny, this kid's got great stuff. His fastball can touch anywhere from 95 to 99 miles an hour. He's got a great split finger. He's got two types of sliders, real good slider. He really has good, good stuff. That's one of the reasons they're putting him in the starting rotation. He's got so many pitches. Not your typical short reliever, only maybe has two. This guy can really dazzle you. Williamson, the National League Rookie of the Year last season. Grew up in the Houston area, 1994 graduate of Friendswood High School, about 30 miles south of Houston. Bill Spires, the third baseman, leads off for the Astros here in the bottom of the first inning and takes a called strike. You wonder sometimes, even though he's had a year under his belt and part of this year, this year coming home and starting, and he hasn't been a starting pitcher very long at the big league level, how this will affect him. Now one and one, Williamson has had tremendous success out of the bullpen against his hometown Houston Astros. Seven appearances, four saves, an earned run average of 0.68 against Houston. Not bad. The difference, though, as a starter, you get to think about it for four days in between, and you're coming home with your family. 
Pass to the first baseman, Sean Casey. One away. The Reds tied for sixth defensively. In the National League with Casey, Castro, Larkin, and Steins around the infield. Dimitri Young, Ken Griffey Jr., Dante Bichette in the outfield. Former Astro Eddie Taubenzi behind the plate. The battery of Williamson and Taubenzi. And there is Barry Larkin, the three-time Gold Glove Award winning shortstop. Greg Biggio. Fouls one off. Biggio. 263. Vigio is not having one of his best years. He's a guy that plays so all out that he bangs himself up. His back's been barking a little bit. He does so many head first slides, and anybody that keeps belly flopping on this hard, any hard turf, the back starts taking a beating. Last year, his shoulder was bothering him. This guy goes all out. His uniform is filthy. Already? Yeah, look at it there. That's pine tar all over his shoulder. That's off his back. third base 0 and 2 and you just see when you have a ball club as you see the pine tar all over his helmet he never wants to clean that helmet that probably not has been has not been clean in about five years see the pine tar on the bat when he takes a swing it comes around and hits his left shoulder and sticks all over his uniform but this guy is a hard nosed player Williamson strikes out Biggio for the second out one of the things I was going to say was when a ball club is struggling and one of your leaders is a guy like Vigio who plays so hard, they come out of their game. Now that at bat was not a good at bat for Craig Vigio. He swung at every pitch thrown to him. That's not what you want a lead off hitter to do. He was not even on the first two pitches the way he normally is because there are times he'll go deep in the count and he'll hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he's trying too hard at this point. That's easy for me to say, but that's what happens when a club starts struggling, that the leaders on the team try to do too much. So with two away, here's Jeff Bagwell. Bagwell 0 for 5 lifetime against Williamson. Bagwell second in National League MVP voting a year ago. team trying to generate some enthusiasm. One and one on Berkman. Mike Covey's the third base coach giving some signs. Now he does not have to give signs to Bagwell. Bagwell's on his own. He can steal a base anytime he thinks he's ready to go. The only sign he might give is a hold sign. Don't go here. a look at Bagwell's lead, though it's not long enough, so he probably is not going to steal. See, that's what you do in the op 
position dugout, the defensive dugout, you read the body language of the base runner. You see how far out he gets. You see whether he's starting to get lower in his stance. You see whether his legs are getting tense. It'll give you an idea what to call from that dugout. Now two and one on Berkman. How did Tarpon he catch this ball? This ball was underneath Berkman's foot. This is a terrific play. You don't think much about it. A little play like this has kept the runner from going to the scoring position. Very nice play. Of course, a former catcher would notice. Well, you've got to appreciate those, little, appreciate those little things, as a manager especially, because really what you've done is kept them from stealing a base, in essence. I am tight. Now three balls, one strike. You know, I was looking at uh, Bagwell at first base. If you take a look at a base runner who has the ability to steal a base, and you look at his stance when he gets prepared to lead, if the right foot is open, not squared off, open the second base, it means you're going to get a better jump. And when you take a look at Bagwell, his right foot is more toward second base, out toward the second baseman than toward the base. He's ready to roll with a crossover stand. many first basemen like Bagwell who are 30-30. In fact, nobody else has ever stolen 30 bases. See his stance? See how the, the uh, right foot is open. Being open, now they can just turn over and head for second. Bagwell bluffed towards second. It's ball four, so Williamson has walked. Bagwell and Berkman back-to-back -back after he retired the first two Astros. So Houston has runners on first and second for Moises Alou. Well, this is a little what I was talking about. Here you got a guy coming home to his home area. He's probably got uh, 50 tickets out tonight to his family and friends, and he's a starter now instead of a reliever where he doesn't know when he's going to come into a game. He's had time to think about it. The adrenaline is flowing more now, and all of a sudden, after getting two outs, he's walked the next two hitters trying to be careful. Now, he has exceptional stuff. He can throw for the ball, the ball for the middle of the plate and make it work. But Moises Alou is a cripple shooter. He'll smack one when he's looking for it a long way. Fouls off the first pitch. 0-1. Jeff Bagwell is such a talented player, just an all-around player. A thousand career runs he scored. This is a first baseman, folks. Twice a 30-30 man as a first baseman. A tremendous team leader. A hard-nosed player. Never says, boo, just pumps the rest of his team up. Now, when you take a look at Moises Alou, who was out all last year with a bad knee, you're looking at one of the big run producers in this game throughout his career. His father is the outstanding manager with the Montreal Expos, one of the classiest men that ever been in this game. This kid, Moises, has really been some kind of hitter. Very strong, big kid, strong hands. Remember the home runs he hit in the World Series with a bad wrist? He's a big-time producer offensively. Want to ring with the Marlins in 97. There are the base runners. Bagwell on second. Berkman with a leadoff first.
when you have a pitcher who can drop down on his, his throwing delivery and throw a little bit lower, the ball will tail back in on a right-handed hitter, and that's what happened. Moises is hurting. Hidalgo on the 3-2 pitch with the bases loaded. No runs, no hits. Three Astros left on base. As we take another look at Williamson's second strikeout. We're chatting with pitching coach Don Gullett. As Williamson struck out Richard Hidalgo with the bases loaded. And the amazing thing was the pitch he struck him out with. Remember, the bases are loaded. He's been wild. He strikes him out on a slider or a breaking ball. That takes a lot of guts. That's a 24-year-old kid out there in front of the home folks. And he's really not been able to get anything over. He throws a breaking ball and gets out of the mess. Only one Astro put the ball in place. Spires grounded out to lead off. Vigio struck out. Then two walks. Williamson hit out Lewin. He struck out Hidalgo. Mm -hmm. Jose Lima back to work after a 1-2-3 first. Dante Bichette found the first pitch back. Bichette working on a 13-game hitting streak. Has the average up to 298. Well, we talked about it in the beginning of the game that the middle of the Cincinnati order has started to hit. Bichette, Casey, Dimitri Young, all together. Not one at a time. You need them hitting together. Wondered with Bichette coming over from the Rockies whether he was going to struggle early, be 
because of one of the concerns. Anybody leaving the high altitude, say, and the comments are, well, they never hit down at sea level the same kind of home run. The shed to deep left field. And it's off the wall to left center. A stand-up double. First hit of the game for the Reds. The Shets hitting streak now at 14 games. Well, coming up after the game, right here on Fox Sports Net, the National Sports Report. First round coverage from the British Open. The Cardinals and the Diamondbacks in action this afternoon. And the Tigers do it again to the Yankees. That's all coming up following the Reds and the Astros, the National Sports Report on Fox Sports Net. Following the double by Bichette, here's Sean Casey, and he takes a call strike. Casey had a hit last night to extend his hitting streak to 12. Well, as we said, they're starting to hit together. Casey is a big cog in this offense, and of course he's his approach to hitting is kind of a strange one when you see him set up initially. He lifts the wrong foot, so to speak. You know, most hitters, when they dig in the box, they dig in with their back foot for a hole, and then they lift their front foot to get their weight back. Casey lifts his back foot. It's kind of funny to watch, but remember, this kid had a great year last year. He hit 332, and he was hitting about 380 early in the year. See how he lifts his back foot to get some sort of rhythm. In the air, left center. The catch is made by Alou. One away. Time now for a Fox Sportsnet game break. Red Sox visiting the Orioles and the fans at Camden Yard reminding Carl Everett to get in the batter's box. Top of the first, no score. Everett wasting no time. First plate appearance following his 10-game suspension, which he appealed, and he cracks this pitch to deep right field, a two-run homer. The Red Sox go on to beat the Orioles 11-7 in the first game of a doubleheader. Ramon Martinez wins his eighth of the year. Omar Garcia Farr, three for five, now batting 4-0-3. As the Sox trail the Yankees by a half game in the AL East, Blue Jays only a game and a half out. Well, we expected that to be a close race. Some of the others we did, too, but the rest of the season, that's going to just back and be back and forth, I would venture to say, American League. Dimitri Young, nice play by the first baseman, Pagwell, takes it to the bag for the second out. As the Shet moves over to third. Okay, good call. That was a nice play. That's not an easy play for a first baseman to get over on the line. But Bagwell can do it all. Watch this. See how he stays down on the ball, and he's got speed to beat the runner to the base. And what, see how he, he plays with such presence. Here's the ball hit inside. Nice play. Outstanding camera work, guys. That is really a good shot. Two away here in the top half of the second inning. Here's the Reds catcher, the former Astro, Eddie Tomlinson. Remember Tomlinson was acquired by Houston from the Cleveland Indians in exchange for Kenny Lofton. Well, Tomlinson had a half a heck of a year last year for Cincinnati. Bounced out in front of the plate. Lima quickly off the mound. Off the first. To retire Tomlinson. A leadoff double by Bichette. And Ed Lever retired for the next three. We head to the bottom of the second from Enron Field with no score. Sit on the left, work out of a first inning jam. Jose Lima on the right, chatting about things in the Astros dugout. As we move to the bottom of the second inning, bottom of the order for the Astros. And here is uh, what uh, Jose Lima was doing as we went away to commercial, checking out some pictures in the digital camera. He's never still. He doesn't sit down. He's all over the place. He's got to be worn out when the game's over. But I'll tell you what, he is a, he's great for this game. He has fun while he's at it. As frustrated as he is right now, and, and kind of pistol whipped by this stadium because of the short porch in left field, he, he's not going to change. 
315 feet from home plate to left field, shortest in the majors. Yeah, the power alley on the other side of the scoreboard is only 362 also in left field. Here's the Astros catcher, Mitch Molecki. He takes a call strike. Now there's a little cut. You see the wall heads back in that direction there, but it's still only 362 in that area. That's where the balls really shoot. Power alley on the other side is also only 373. How about straightaway center? That's center field. Now there's, yeah, there's the power alley in right center field. You see there's a little break here also. Center field is up a hill, and there's a flagpole in the field area. And that's a long way out there. That's the longest in baseball. It's called Towles Hill, named after team president of Tal Smith. 436 feet to straightaway center. Well, you remember the flagpole that used to sit in center field at Yankee Stadium and also at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. And the, the terrace was from Crosby Field in Cincinnati. That was all the way around that field. I played in that place. That used to be fun to watch some outfielders never played in an outfield with a terrace before. Fall uphill. Tal Smith on the left, Jerry Hutziger on the right, the general manager, Tal Smith, president of the club. And Tal Smith worked for the Reds way back in 1958. He was Cincinnati's farm director. After they played at Crosley Field. He doesn't want you to tell about those years how long ago that was. Crosley Field was a, an interesting place to play. They had a huge scoreboard in left center field that was in play. But some of the great home run hitters that hit rockets off of that, playing it on, and just popping over the short porch in left field. The payoff pitch to Molesky. He got him. Third strikeout for Scott Williamson. Take a look back at Crosley Field in Cincinnati. As you can see the hill. See the hill that the outfielders had to run up, and this was earlier this year in this place. Andrew Jones trying to negotiate that hill, and the next hitter hit the ball, but he caught it, and he felt lucky to do so. It's a funny feeling to be looking for a ball, and all of a sudden you hit the hill, and your legs feel like they're getting shorter. You know, a lot of things have changed in these ballparks. Remember years ago, and I'm starting to show my age, there used to be a warm-up mound also, as you're looking at the, the hill in center field and the, and the flagpole. But there used to be a warm-up mound in front of the dugouts on each field. So the starting pitcher would warm up in front of the, of the uh, dugout. So now the catcher had to negotiate another pitcher's mound that was in foul ground. How did you negotiate? Well, very carefully. to the shortstop, Julio Lugo. Now one ball, two strikes. Well, Kenny, as we mentioned before, was a, as we watch young Lugo try to swing at that high fastball, that's almost impossible to hit it up there. But Williamson has such good stuff that he can be comfortably wild. He can be wild up and in. I mean, obviously, when he hit Moises Alou, that's not what he wanted to do. And certainly, that's what will happen when you spin off and you throw as hard as he does. Used to do that when he came to the plate with such effort, and his front side would spin a little bit, and his arm would drop down, and his ball would run into a right-hander. Well, this Williamson, remember what we said? He can touch 99 miles an hour, and if he drops out on his delivery a little bit with his hand, doesn't stay on top of the ball. There's no telling where it will go. Another full count, three balls, two strikes on Lugo, with the opposing pitcher Jose Lima waiting on deck. Base. You can see his see his balance start back start back, and then when he finishes, he spins off. Now watch as he goes. See how he pulls off too soon. There's nothing wrong with falling off after you delivered the ball, but you got to go straight at the plate when you're trying to deliver it. Jose Lima went 
Gets a bump and a runner will go over. And a successful sacrifice punt. For the second out, sacrifice one four. Lugo moves to second. Very good punt. Those are the little things that you have to do as a pitcher in the National League to be successful, to help yourself. Now he's got the head of the bat up the way you want it. That's what you want, the head of the bat up that way. You don't want it low. And now when the ball happens to be a little lower, that was perfect. He almost caught the ball with the head of the bat and deadened it up along the first baseline. Very good technique. That's not easy. You got a guy out there throwing bullets, and it's very difficult if the ball's at you to pull the bat back and not try to just get out of the way and jab at it. That was a nice job. So with two outs, runner on second here, Spires. He bounced down for the first base from Casey in the first inning. Off the middle. Base hit. Coming to right the score is Lugo. And the Astros. Take a one up the lead. RBI number 22 for Bill Spires, who extends his hitting streak to 10 games. Now, Bill Spires is a real professional type of player. Jerry Hunsinger knew him from the Mets, and he brought him in here. Now, when you see this play, both middle infielders are trying to knock the ball down because if they can knock the ball down, they'll keep the runner at third, and they cannot do it. What does that show? The little things in this game, that sacrifice bunt by Lima got the runner to second base. So Lima helping his own cause. Astros score the game's first run on their first hit. Greg Biggio takes a call strike. Biggio struck out his first time up. The average down 32 points from a year ago. How about last year he had 56 doubles. This year he only has 11. Wow, what a difference that is. Biggio, but the Astros take the lead. Scored a run on one hit and a walk. Two innings of the books for Menron. one nothing. Astros. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by McDonald's. Did somebody say McDonald's? Back at Enron Field in Houston, Kenny Albert with Jeff Torborg. We move to the third with the Astros on top by a run. Our first visit to this ballpark, and we were chatting prior to the game. It reminds us both of Seattle and Arizona. Yeah, it really does. It's one of those ballparks that is special. It's beautiful. And we'll be seeing one of these games on Fox Saturday. We'll be at Safeco Field in Seattle, the Rangers at the Mariners. But these new ballparks with these retractable roofs are beautiful. This is a beautiful facility. Check local listings. For the game and time in your area. Fox Saturday baseball. As Castro doubles down the left field line. Leading off the third inning. Well, this is what you've got to be a little concerned about. If you're Lima is that bottom of the order right away jumps the first pitch you see where it was we talked early in the game about keeping the ball from being elevated in the strike zone in the middle of the plate unless you're trying to get it up under the hands and Castro just jumped that first high fastball and that's one of the things you got to be concerned about if you're Jose Lima especially your club just scored a run you try to shut the other guys down right away so a leadoff double for Castro the pitcher Scott Williamson steps in. Williamson looking to pull a Jose Lima. Lima had trouble with it. Throws it out. He thought about going to third. I'll tell you what, this was a heck of an athletic play. He bobbled this ball and it got away from him. And he still was able to recover and throw the pitcher Scott Williamson out at first base. This was a heck of an athletic play. Watch how he responds. He's going to go to third with this. He takes his eye off the ball a little bit, but nice reaction, and he at least gets one out. I mean, that that can be a big inning if he does not recover and throw the runner out at first base. See? You know, he's so animated. He tells everybody on the field how he has not thought or he didn't do something right. 
tell you what, he's an interesting guy to watch. I'll tell you what, the rest of his teammates want to play for a guy like this. Sacrifice one four. Williamson moving Castro over to third. Chris Stein struck out his first time up. Well, we talked about Lima, too, about getting hurt on high fastballs. He also has a great, and we'll keep saying it's a great circle change. But if he drops his arm angle, it won't go down either. See, he's a little low, I think. Now, I haven't been able to compare films of what he did last year, but occasionally he looks like he drops his arm a little bit lower than I remember him doing. That elevates his pitches. And when you throw a circle change, that's when you have your index and thumb together, index finger and thumb together. you got to stay on top of it to make it work. Two and one on Chris Stein with one out. Castro on third. And Barry Larkin on deck. Baseline, and that's why third base is such a tough position, especially for a guy that's been a shortstop before. But watch this. You can watch this in sync. Watch how fast that thing gets there. And there's a veteran player. That's Bill Spires, and you can see Lima reacting. Bill Spires, as the veteran, wasn't getting all excited about trying to catch it and get to the runner. That's when you miss the ball. He made sure he caught that bullet. What do you think Lima said to his glove? You know, a couple years ago, I talked to Larry Durker about Jose, and his concern at the time was they got him to throw a two-seam fastball instead of that four-seamer up in the zone all the time to get it to stay down and sink in the zone a little. And Larry at that time, as Barry Larkin tells his ball off the way, said there are times when he gets so emotional that he tries to throw harder and the ball comes up in the zone. So you set everything up from your fastball. I don't care how good your off-speed pitches are, and he's got a great circle change. Unless you get ahead in the count, the hitters are going to lay off the other pitch, the off-speed pitch. One and two on Barry Larkin. With Ken Griffey Jr. waiting on deck. Our Toyota leaders, Barry Larkin, in his 15th season, with the Cincinnati Reds. And he's a captain, and he deserves to be. Check swing, ball two, says Bruce Fremick. Now Barry Larkin wears a C on his chest like they do in, the, in hockey. He's a captain of the ball club, and he has really been a tremendous player for the Reds. And you see Craig Biggio in his 13th season with the Astros. Now back this way into the booth to our left. Jeff was up on his feet waiting to make the catch even without his old catcher's mitt. <laughs> There's nobody in that booth, Jeff. I think you can go get it. Well, I could have had that one. You're all this right way. as long as I try to catch it. If I try to hit it, you're in trouble. This one fouled down the baseline. You know, that ball bounced out of that booth, and a lady down below caught it. And she, that made her day. You know, people don't, you don't realize what a, a thrill it is to catch a baseball. But you also don't realize how hard those things are coming back or into the stands. When somebody reaches up, and sometimes they'll catch the ball, but they'll have to go have a cast put on their hand. Four count, three and two on Larkin. Double to lead off the inning. Takes a lead off first. Walk it to the second base for Fischio. Over to Bagwell. And that will do it for the Reds for the second consecutive inning. Lima allows a leadoff double. And the runner is stranded on third. He spent 10 years here in Houston with Craig Biggio. There's really not a flaw in his game that he can't do, really. And, um, you know, 
his numbers are really unbelievable. And uh, you know, Baggy's not gonna—he's not a guy that's gonna actually flash you to death. But at the end of the year, you can look at his numbers every year and go, "Wow!" And uh, having him next to me side by side for the last 10 years is really. It's been a lot of fun, and um, we're hoping we can continue it, uh, you know, to finish out our careers here. Um, because hey, he's one of the best players in the game. He is one of the best players in the game. He's not kidding, and he makes things happen on the field, and he does it in a unique way at the at the uh, plate. He stands with a spread stance. It takes an incredibly strong man to do what he does to hit the way he does. And you can see what he does, not just at the plate, but in the field. I mean, these guys can play, but look at this stance. You're starting to see more of this type of stance with this spread stance. And they've got a big shift on for him to left field. But look at this stance. See how spread it is? Now, he doesn't stride into the ball. He just kind of rolls the foot and then swings from there. It takes immense strength to do this. center field. So a leadoff single here in the third for Bagwell. Well, the shift didn't work there. That's like one of those shifts when you put an overshift to one side of the field and the guy hits it out of the ballpark. He can never play deep enough, but this was a rocket to center field. But he's just saying it's a fastball. He's telling Jose Cruz Sr., who was a great hitter here in his own right for many years with the Astros, that it was a fastball and he jumped it. Astros have the leadoff man on for the first time as Lance Berkman takes ball one. Berkman walked back in the first inning. Kenny, it's going to be a tough decision for the Astros. You're talking big bucks to keep Jeff Bagwell here. They already have Vigio signed for another three years after this for big dollars. I mean, some of these markets just can't afford the kind of money that you might have to lay out for two players, no matter how good they are. That's the economics of the game. It is really difficult, and that's what the commissioner, Bud Sealing, is trying to remedy now. That blue ribbon panel made a suggestion as to how to handle things about revenue sharing and so on. But you take Jerry Hunsaker. It is a very difficult job for a general manager in a media market or small market team. There's Drake McLean, the owner of this ball club, this year and here he is he's on the phone trying to make a deal right now but he had to cut the payroll this year that's why Hampton is not here imagine how to, you have to, to get rid of 22 wins then you get rid of a center fielder who has 25 home runs 27 stolen bases 108 RBIs and Carl Everett and Derek Bell has been one of your consistent players even though he came off an off year they lost their shortstop in Gutierrez then they come into the season who expected the pitching staff to struggle way they have. It's been a very difficult year here. Here's the shortstop left and puts it. A potential double play grounder. Barry Larkin, you wonder what's going through his mind these days, commits his 11th error. But he's going to be real quick here. He's going to try to turn it. The ball came up and he was going to make it a real quick turn and he just mishandled the exchange. I'll tell you something, Kenny. I don't care whether a guy's a long-time yeah. veteran. With all the stuff that's been flying around from the economic side or whether he's going to be here or not, that takes its toll on a player. And I'm not trying to lay fault on the organization or on Griffey, I mean, on uh, Larkin and his agent. That takes its toll on the player. They're only human, and there's a lot going through their minds during a season. Two on, nobody out. Shalou at the plate. He was hit by a pitch his first time up. Astros lead the league in the hit by a pitch category. Astro players have been hit by 55 pitches so far this season. They don't lead the league in many offensive categories this year, but that is one of them. This guy is such a big producer. My oldest son, Doug, was a left-handed pitcher out of the University of North Carolina, and he and Moises roomed together in their second year, and actually Doug's first year in the minor leagues in Watertown, New York. And he told me at the time what a good guy Moises is. 
Is that the Pirates organization? The Pirate organization, yeah. And he has, he has really had some career. Unfortunately, he's had two terrible injuries. But look what he's done the last 23 games. My Lord, what more could you do? And he's been going through some talk. You know, there had been talk that some other ball clubs were very interested in trading for him, but he has the right to dictate if he were to move to another team. And, and you know, he has been around. Obviously, when you have a guy that's come from a major league family, his uncles and his dad, but this game is a tough game to play, not having all the distractions, uh, without having all the distractions of thinking about maybe I have to go somewhere else. trying to come back from the injury and somehow he uh, had a problem with a bicycle and injured the knee again. Missed the entire year last year. He does something too when you're talking about hitters and we talk about stances, we're talking about back rolls and cases. He turns his front foot in to keep his front side closed. How he turns the back heel toward the pitcher. That's trying to keep his front side in so he doesn't pull off the ball. Now three balls, one strike. Two on, nobody out. Well, you can see what kind of hitter he uses the whole field. He's got big time power and pitches up in the zone. Boy, he doesn't miss some up in the in the middle of the strike zone. He likes to get his arms extended. Most guys do. Remember, this guy's a good sized guy. 6 2 2 20. But look at his stance. See how he's pigeon toed? The back foot in keeps his hips open. Fourth walk issued by Williamson. And for the second time tonight, the Astros have loaded the bases. Time now for another Fox Sports Net game break. We're taking the Yankee Stadium. Top of the sixth inning. Yankees leading the Tigers 3 2. Two men on for one. Encarnacion hits this liner up the middle off Andy Pettit to score two runs. Tigers take a 4-3 lead and go on to beat the Yankees by the score of 5-3 as former Astro Willie Blair improves his record to 6-2. Here in Houston, bases loaded again for Richard Hidalgo. He struck out with the bases loaded and two outs in the first inning. Comes to the plate here with the bases loaded and nobody out. There's Hagwell on third, Berkman on second, Alou the runner on first. Same base runners, first inning when Hidalgo struck out. Now the situation's a little different now. They're none out. But when you look at Hidalgo, he's having a terrific year. He can compare favorably with Griffey, for example. Just take a look at the numbers. He's hitting 285 with 26 home runs. Griffey's at 239 with 30 home runs. Hidalgo's got 68 RBIs. Griffey's got 78. So you're talking about a young up-and-coming player as Don Gullett goes to the mound to try to calm his young pitcher down. Now, Williamson probably will not be around this game past the fifth, even if he gets out of this, because he's got so many pitches. Remember, he's a converted setup man, bullpen relief type of pitcher where he hadn't been the type of pitcher that throws too many pitches. Coming into this inning, he already had 40 pitches thrown, and he is struggling, and he has no outs now. But one of the things you say when you go out to the mound in a situation like that is, you got 55 pitches now, is don't worry about the situation. Get this hitter. If you give up a run, okay. Try to get this guy, either you try to strike him out if you can, or get him to hit a ground ball. Maybe we can get out of the inning without it being a big one. Don't worry about the runner at third. Ground ball for the shortstop. Larkin has this one. Goes to second for one. Over to first. And the Reds turn a 6-4-3. Manuel scores. The Astros take a 2-0 lead. I didn't hear what Don Gullett said, but I guarantee that was part of his conversation with him. Get a ground ball, and we'll keep this big inning down. And they got exactly what they wanted. There's 
Berkman on third. So Barry Larkin, who booted the potential double play ball earlier this inning, starts the double play. Now two away for Mitch Molesky, who struck out his first time up. Berkman on third with two outs. Look at the bottom fall out of this pitch. This ball tumbles so hard. Look at that. In the old days, that's the same rotation that we had with the illegal spitball. Okay, now he runs a four-seam fastball in up on Molusky, and then normally what that sets up is another one, another split finger down in the strike zone. The pressure's a little bit on top of the now because you want this ball, if you miss, you got to miss down, and you might even bounce it. So a runner at third, top of the really got to look for the ball in the dirt. Well, that was one that didn't go. Now, I don't know if that was a slider cutter that might have been trying to go in on his hands or whether that was a hanging split. But that didn't do anything. split as you'll see it's almost like what a guy would call a fork ball some people don't know the difference but he really spreads his fingers on the ball allows it to tumble out through his fingers there it is in the dirt nice play by Tauberty see as a catcher one of the things you have to do is you are calling a particular pitch you have to anticipate it being in the dirt now you'll see the ball come out of his glove here let's see if we can see his grip You can see it split. Yeah, see how the ball has very little rotation? That's why that ball tumbles. That is a nasty pitch, and that's where you want it down. The 2-2 two -two off speed pitch. High and away, and the count is full. Three balls, two strikes on uh, Mitch Molesky. The eighth full count over the first two and two-thirds. in Houston, Kenny Albert, Jeff Torborg from Enron Field. We move to the fourth inning, and the hometown Astros lead the Reds by the score of 2-0. Scott Williamson, Red starter, has allowed only two hits over the first three innings, but he's walked four, he hit a batter, and has allowed two runs. He's thrown 63 pitches. It didn't help him any of the error in that inning. That keeps the inning going, but he's a very intense young guy. But again, we keep talking about, you know, he gets excited. He turned around. He smoked the bench. But he's smart to use his foot, not his arm, arm or his hand. Is that his pitching foot? <laughs> Towering foul pop. And the catch is made by Molesky to retire Ken Griffey Jr. Now, that's a big out to get Griffey out in this situation. He, even though his average is down, he is crushing the ball for power numbers, and he went after that first pitch and got under it. There's a lot of pressure on this kid, too. You know, people don't realize, they say, well, I'm the kind of money he's making. You know, the kind of money you make, it doesn't matter. You still have pride. He's going home. He's going to a different league. He's with his dad, on the, who's on the coaching staff. He's trying to show his new fans in his hometown folks how good he is. Now, he's doing it with home runs and RBIs, but struggling a little, come out of his game, 
standing in strike zone, but this guy is some player, and I think he's playing hurt. Dante Bichette, who has picked things up after his month of April, his first month with the Reds, he hit 209. Doubled in the second inning tonight, extending his hitting streak to 14 games. Well, Kenny, what he, so many of these guys is planted in their minds that they have been very successful at Colorado at Coors Field in the elevation. So many people have counted in their heads that because the ball carries so well there, they can't hit on the road. You remember the Rocky team couldn't win on the road? Well, what happens to a hitter like Bichette is he figures he's got to hit the ball harder to hit the ball out of the ballpark. When he starts to realize he doesn't, even though he played all those games on the road, the hometown folks, you're trying to impress him. He's starting to get it together, and he's heated up. He's got a unique way of hitting, too. Well, back to the screen, two and two on Bichette. One out in the Reds' fourth. Astros leading two nothing. Well, he likes fastballs, but he can hit sliders. Remember, a slider is a slower fastball that's sliding. He also has changed up well. He likes the ball out over the plate. You can see he's a big guy with big arms. He wants to get him extended. And he's pulled the ball more since he's been with Cincinnati. But he's another guy with one of those widespread stances. He pushes his weight way back on his back leg, and he has his front foot open. And he kind of uses his shoulder as a guide for his bat. Watch how he spreads out. He gets his feet way out, pushes his weight back. This is ball four. Second strikeout for Jose Lima. Well, Jeff, coming up following the Reds and the Astros, right here on Fox Sports Net, the National Sports Report. First round coverage from the British Open. Randy Johnson takes on the Cardinals. Battle of first place teams in Phoenix. And the Tigers do it again to the Yankees. That's all coming up after the game on the National Sports Report. With two away, here's Sean Casey. Fly to left field in the second inning. Third base umpire Bill Welke signaling ball one. Fielding Colbert working behind the plate tonight. Bruce Fremming at first. Rob Drake, the second base umpire. And Bill Welke down at third. where Sean Casey added another autographed baseball to his collection. Reds played in Detroit earlier this week. Casey's newest prize, a Kirk Gibson autographed ball. He says he has 170 baseballs signed by the president and former major leaguers. Another nice play by Padwell. Throws to Lima for the final out of the inning. Another 1-2-3 inning for Lima with an assist to his all-star first baseman. Well, it is not a return home to remember for Scott Williamson in his third start after 38 relief appearances this year, 62 last year. Williamson pulled after just three innings. He allowed two runs on two hits, four walks, four strikeouts, and is replaced by 30-year-old left-hander Ron Vallone, who had been a starter, made 17 starts for the Reds, and this will be his second appearance out of the bullpen. So role reversals for both Williamson and Vallone. Yeah, you're right. Vallone had an outstanding run last year. He pitched a one-hitter against the Astros. He's a big guy, 6'3", 237. He was a big tight end at University of Massachusetts, and he bounced around a little while, from, uh, uh, for a while, from several teams, and kind of found a home last year. It's another one of Don Gullett's reclamation jobs, but they put him back in the bullpen this year. But I think what happened with Williamson, as you see Scott Williamson on the bench, he was really out of whack. It's a credit to his stuff that he had four strikeouts. He was all over the place. The only reason he didn't was really in big trouble because his stuff is good. Well, Alone facing Julio Lugo, the Astros shortstop, who walked and scored back in the 
second inning. Lugo, Lima, and Spires for Houston here in the fourth. Strike called, one and one. Take you to the bottom of the ninth inning. Cardinals leading two to one. Tony Womack smacks a two-run home run over the right field wall to win the game for the D-backs. 3-2 over the Cardinals. Over 40,000 in attendance at Bank One Ballpark. A complete game victory for Randy Johnson. He struck out 11. He had a perfect game into the sixth inning. Broken up by Eduardo Perez, who homered for the Cardinals. The son of former Reds great Tony Perez, who will be inducted into the Hall of Fame this Sunday afternoon. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to miss that. I had hoped to go to see Carlton Fisk, a former captain of mine for the White Sox, where I was fortunate enough to be his manager, go in on Sunday. I was, thought we'd be leaving from here like I did last year to go see Nolan Ryan inducted. But my game on Saturday has been rescheduled in Seattle. I just can't make it. But, boy, is that going to be a great class? Marty Brenneman. Marky Anderson going in. Tony Perez, Carlton Fisk. What? If, if you ever get a chance to go to the Hall of Fame and experience that, that is really spine tingling. Three and one on Jose Lima. Eduardo Perez, the son of Tony. Eduardo, who homered today, replaced Mark McGuire on the Cardinals roster last Thursday. Wire placed on the DL. Eduardo Perez was activated. Jose Lima, base hit into the gap at left center. His fourth hit of the season in 34 at bat. So Lima, who sacrificed Lugo over to second in the second inning, leading to an Astros run. Singles to left center with one out here in the fourth. Well, he hits his ball hard in the left center field, and the fans really gave him a great hand. But here's a play that you just take for granted from Ken Griffey. He cut this ball off. This could have been extra bases. Ken Griffey gets over to get this ball. Look at him. And we wheels and throws the ball in him. You've got a good athlete here in Lima. He thinks he's going to second. Whoa, no, I better not. Be so happy he's not been known as uh, the Babe Ruth of pitchers. He surprised he didn't ask for that ball. Bill Spires one for two with an RBI. Getting back to Eduardo Perez. Tony LaRusso, the Cardinals manager, and general manager Walt Jockety told Perez, You will miss Sunday's game. Perez did not ask. They told him, You will miss the game. You better go to the Hall of Fame. Oh, that's great. They said, we don't want to see you on Sunday. You know, it's strange. A lot of the old-time baseball players say, well, we didn't ever leave to have uh, one of our children born, you know, that kind of thing, or, or something like this. Why not? This is a family game. It should be family. Too. Yes, it's a business. But it's a long season. Every day, you know, the schedule has changed from the old days. They used to have some Mondays off in the past because they played doubleheaders on Sundays. You play almost every day of the year now. Like, I'd love to see the fans. Here is Lima, who is struggling. I mean, he has terrible numbers this year. These fans were cheering him for that base hit. They appreciate the way this guy plays. That's great. 
beautiful new ballpark, three-time division, consecutive division winner. It's good to see the fans are patient here. Three and one on Spires. 20 years from now, do you think Eduardo Perez will remember the Hall of Fame ceremonies? Or had he not gone, do you think he would remember a Sunday afternoon game in Houston? He'll remember that he wasn't there with his dad, yeah. when I was managing the White Sox to go for two of our son's graduations within a two-week period in June, but I was gone. One was high school and one was college, all four. Runners on first and second for the Astros. who are one only 15 of 44 here at Enron. Astros franchise suffered through only four losing seasons at home in 35 years at the Astrodome. You know, usually it doesn't work that way. Usually it works the other way. You go into a new ballpark and you tear it up. This ballpark played a little differently than the hitters were used to having it play, but especially for the pitchers. If you don't have good pitching, it sets the tone. You're going to get hurt. Craig Vigio hits the first pitch into the right field corner. What a count! The shed had it, and then it popped out of his glove. And now Vigio is out at first. He made the wide turn and was tagged out by Sean Casey. But Vigio was watching the ball dropped in right field, and he didn't see that Bill Spires had to hold up in front of him. Vigio kept going. He saw Spire stop, but then he realized he was in no man's land. Got to, that hurts him. That's a veteran player. And this thing really hurts him because he's one of those guys that have played the game hard but also played it well. This is a nice effort by Bichette. He gets to the ball, but he's in the corner. He looks up after it hits his glove, hits, sees the wall, and drops the ball. And then Vigio retired 9-4-3. Lima held it third, Spires held it second. Vigio after the wide turn. Tagged out by Casey. Now the Reds will intentionally walk Bagwell. The load the bases for Lance Berkman. You know, the other thing that you have in this equation, Kenny, is you got a pitcher running at the front end of this. Now, most good base runners will go halfway from the base when they weren't sure where the ball was going to be caught, but I wouldn't be surprised that Lima got hung out there. I wasn't watching him so much, but Bill Spires had to watch the runner in front of him, so you feel like a fool if you're busy of getting caught in that thing, but when you have a pitcher on the bases, you've got to be a little more careful. Now for the third time in four innings, the Astros have loaded the bases. The results of the first two bases loaded situations, only one run. Yeah, and that hurts. As you see this ball that Vigio hits, Bichette almost makes a heck of a play on the ball and, and drops it. Now, that's another thing. If you're not an experienced base runner, you might take your eye off the outfielder and not realize he dropped it. Here's the relay play. Casey gets back to the base. time tonight from the right side. He's only a 2-12 hitter as a right-handed hitter as opposed to 3-11 left-handed. Boy, and he's swung from his heels on that pitch. But look what he's done with the bases loaded. That's not bad. Hidalgo came up with the bases loaded in both the first and the third innings. Portman into left. A long run for Young. He cannot get to it. It rolls to the wall. Two runs will score. The Astros lead 4-0. Well, Kenny, you were talking about the bases were loaded prior to this, and they couldn't get the runs in the way they thought for a big inning. They got one in before, but Lance Berkman turns around, hits right-handed, Drives this ball over Dimitri Young's head in left field. This was a line drive bullet. Berkman had really tried to jump the first pitch from Ballone, and he fouled it back. A 
but this one he jumped in line in the left center field. He hit this ball hard. A bases clearing double. After Hidalgo struck out with the bases loaded and two outs in the first inning. Bounced into a double play with the bases loaded in the third, scoring one run. Berkman clears the bases. He drives in Lima, Spires, and Bagwell for a 5-0 Houston lead. You mentioned Berkman had been batting only 2-12 from the right side. Sometimes, you know, that can be a little deceptive because a guy who is a switch hitter normally doesn't hit that much from the right side. But normally right-handed hitters are high fastball hitters, and he went looking for them, and that's what Malone fed him. Two balls up in the zone, and he got the one. Wow, Moises Alou is hurt. He already got hit in the hand with a pitch. Now this one looks like he maybe fouled it. Well, he's got the, he's got the protector on the left foot. Boy, I'll tell you, these hurt. You have no idea. If you hit a ball down, yeah, you hit a ball down on the shin or the foot, it really hurts. Oh, this one missed the guard. It missed the guard. It hit the shin right between the guard and his knee. You don't really want to hit him. You want to go sit down and rub it. One and two on a loop. Second with two outs. Popped up to the right side. Juan Castro makes the catch to end the inning, but the Astros score three runs on two hits and now lead the Reds 5 0. The telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Back in Houston where the Astros lead the Reds 5-0. Our 7-11 trivia question. Last year the Astros had two 20-game winners in Mike Hampton and Jose Lima. Who was the first 20-game winner? in Astros history. Jeff, I have a strange feeling he's in the ballpark. In uniform. Yes, I believe so. There he is. Boy, what a good pitcher Larry Durker was, I'll tell you. Hampton won 22 games last year, Lima 21. As Dimitri Young leads off for the Reds here in the fifth inning against Lima. Things started to turn around for Jose Lima. He won his first start this season. He won his last decision. In between, he lost 13 in a row. But his teammates have got the Astros out to a 5 0 lead as Dimitri Young becomes the third Red to lead off an inning tonight with a double. Those are their only three base runners. said the question you asked are things turning for him what you just saw in that bat is kind of a microcosm of what's happened to him this year he makes a terrible mistake two ball uh, two strikes no balls he gives the hitter a pitch to hit that is not the way you have to pitch or he has to pitch to win he's got other pitches to get the hitters out if he's having trouble with the fastball he wants to run it in we'll make sure you get it in but not up in the zone see that's what's been killing him this year He's got a great changeup. He even has a second type of changeup. He's got a cutter. He's got a slider. But he gets hurt on his fastball up in the strike zone. Unless that was an all-speed pitch up in the zone. I don't think it was. Two and zero on the Reds catcher Eddie Tomenzi. Tomenzi just two for his last 23. Berkman on the one hop. 
Young comes in to score. RBI number 20 for Tobinze, but he was held to a single on the nice play in right field by Berkman. That was a nice play. As you take a look again at this pitch, this is not a bad pitch. It's a pretty good piece of hitting by Ed Tobinze. It's an off-speed pitch down. But Berkman makes a terrific play on this ball, flat out, and he knows where he's going to go with the ball. He'll give up the run. He makes a nice play, saying, boy, if this ball gets by, you got Tobinze at least at second base. First pitch to one. Castro is inside for ball one. Yeah, that's one of the problems that the Astros have had, too. They, they played a couple converted first basemen in the outfield. Berkman and Darrell Ward. And that can be difficult. Normally, first basemen have been there for a reason. They don't have a lot of foot speed. And it's tough in the outfield. But Berkman made a terrific play on this. He's a local kid. He was an All-American at Rice. Is missing Roger Cedeno. Moises Alou has spent time on the DL this year. Castro into the left field corner. Third consecutive hit of the inning for the Reds. Castro on his way to second. Holding at third is Tomlinzi. Reds now to get comeback here in the fifth. Runners on second and third. Nobody out. One run already in. Well, Kenny, that's what has happened all season long is Bert Hooten who is the new pitching coach here. This is what's happened to Lima. See where the ball is? Right up in the strike zone. That's almost the identical place where the pitch was the time before to Castro. Remember the first pitch? He jumped and hit it to the left field. That's the same height. And this is what's been happening to Lima. Bert Hooten, who was an outstanding pitcher with the Cubs and the Dodgers, the true knuckleball, knuckle curveballer, I should say, Double-A pitching coach. Bird Hooten had one of the most unique pitches you ever want to see. It was a knuckleball curveball that he pushed out with two fingers like a knuckleball and it just dove down in the strike zone. Jeff, this is Brooks Kieschnick, the former Cub. American at Texas during his collegiate days. He will pinch hit for the pitcher below. It's his first major league at bat since 1997. An all-star in the International League this year. Leading the league with 80 runs batted in. Tied for the league lead with 22 home runs. Kenny, when this young man signed, they didn't know whether he was going to be a pitcher or a, an outfielder. He was that kind of good double-type athlete, signed with the Cubs originally. And I can remember Al Goldis, who was a farm director of the Cubs at the time and scouting director, really liked this young man. And he bounced around a little bit, but he was a good-looking hitter when he first came up. Second and third, nobody out. The 1-1, one -one, right back to the box. Lima lifts Tomlinson back to third and then throws out Keystick. <laughs> Very, he's even animated on this kind of play. I, I don't think I've ever seen a fake back like this one. Ball hit right back to Lima. Once he catches it, now he looks at third base and he gives him like a, a double whammy. Like, oh boy, I'm coming over there at you. <laughs> but he did the right thing. You know, he could have had Tobinzi at third base. But he's making, no, you're not going home, he said. But he took the one out. He made sure of one. He didn't mess around. Steins for the second consecutive at bat with a runner on third. Lines out to the third baseman Spires. A carbon copy of his last at bat. It sure was. It was a bullet right at Bill Spires. Here it is. He lifts that leg and hits a bullet. There Spires stays with it. Jose Lima doing him his best impersonation of Mark the Bird Fitterich. I don't know. You know, right there, he was talking to his glove. It looked like he got an answer because he kind of lifted his shoulders like, well, I don't know. Maybe he didn't like what he was saying. Barry Larkin open two. That was the first pitch off the screen. Mark the Bird Fitterich. He got down. 
done. He would pat the rubber, clean it off, put the dirt in front of the hole on his hands and knees, talk to the ball. I was a young manager with the Indians back when he was really making it big with the Tigers. He even told me to get off the field one day when I was out arguing on a call. Did you listen to him? Had a few choice words for him. As Larkin grounds out to right. Rizzio to Bagwell. So despite allowing base hits for the first three batters in the inning, Wheeler gives up only one run. It's now 5-1 Astros. Right of that? Yeah, that's a sharp-looking rig out there. Boy, what a racket it makes when it goes back and forth. But you want to understand that the reason that it's out there is because it's that's where the old railroad station was right back here. Well, Jeff, we take you back to our 7-Eleven trivia. Who was the first 20-game winner in Astros history? I think we gave away the answer. <laughs> yeah, manager Larry Durker. Boy, was he a good-looking young pitcher when he came up. He's out of Southern California, out of San Fernando Valley. When he first came up, boy, he could throw. They had some guys here that could bring it. Don Wilson was one. One of the Forches was here at the time. I guess that was Bobby Forch. Or no, that was Ken Forch. And they had Griffin. They, they really had a bunch of young guys that could bring it. Larry Durker spent 13 years as a pitcher with the Astros and then 18 in the broadcast booth his fourth season as the manager here in Houston. Three consecutive division titles. Well, after this year, he'll want to go back upstairs. Boy, I tell you, this has been a tough one for him. You know, he's done a terrific job coming out of the booth. 27-year-old right-hander Scott Winchester is the third Reds pitcher of the night. Ron Malone was pinch hit for In the top half of the inning, Malone allowed three runs on three hits. Here's one inning of work. Hidalgo, who has come to the plate twice with the bases loaded, struck out to end the first inning. Grounded into a run-scoring double play in the third. So he's 0 for 2. Uh, Richard Hidalgo is one of the reasons that the Houston organization allowed Bobby Abreu to go into the expansion. This, this guy was that talented. Hidalgo into the left field stands his 27th home run of the season. Well, that's as though it's right on cue for us. We're talking about that train and the, the engineer up there above that wall, and Hidalgo almost hits it up on a railroad track. That was a bomb. home run allowed by Winchester in his five appearances. Number 27 for Hidalgo. He could not do it with the bases loaded twice, but does hit a solo shot to lead off the Astros' fifth. Well, he catches this ball. This is out over the plate. This shows how strong he is. This is out over the plate, and he hooks it. He gets ahead of the bat out. That would have been a home run way out of the dome, even. That ball was crushed way out of the dome. I don't mean out of the stadium, but it would have been a home run there, too, as well, easily. You know, when there's been so much talk about Carl Everett doing such a great job for the Red Sox and why he was traded from here, there was Hidalgo doing a terrific job for him, as you can see what he's doing this year, and they had Moises Alou coming back. He slices this one down the left field line. It cracks in. A ground rule double. First hit of the game for Molesky. And a nice job by the third base um umpire, Bill Welke, hustling down the left field line. Well, you really have to. In some of these unique ballparks, especially when you have to stand so close to the line like Yankee Stadium and Fenway, this is just a pop-up, and it looks like it's going to go foul, but it hits fair, and it bounces right up into the seats. That line right down there looks just like Fenway Park. And, of course, that scoreboard is a small green monster, I guess. Miniature monster. <laughs> Well, 
Westchester will add a leadoff home run. Followed by the Molesky double. There in the fifth. Julio Lugo fouls off the first pitch. Lugo walked and scored in the second inning, struck down in the fourth. Yeah, I was reading something about Winchester. Winchester played at Clemson and played on the Citrus Bowl football team. Bill Spires on the other side of the field with the Astros also was a kicker at Clemson and a baseball player. Clemson puts out some good baseball teams and also obviously some good football teams. Billy Koch, the Blue Jays closer. Chris Benson, the pilot yes. ace, also pitched to Clemson. Yep. Here's Bill Spires. Boy, is he, he's a kind of guy, boy, a manager just is really grateful to have on a ball club. A real professional. Play anywhere you ask him to play. Good pinch hitter. Can play every day. getting set for the 0-2. He strikes out Lugo. Oh, Julio got a piece of it. So he stays alive at no balls, two strikes with Jose Lima waiting on deck. Here's a breaking ball down and away, and the ball hits in the dirt, so just a little nip on it, and that's all it takes. Just tick that ball. In fact, you remember in the old days, they said, oh, he ticked the ball, ticked the ball when you were a kid. again right here on Fox Sportsnet Mondays at 5.30. Check local listings. It's as close to the game as you can get. And there is this week's guest host. Jose Lima sacrificed punt in the second inning. He singled and scored in the fourth. You hear the reception the fans gave him when he came up to the plate. That is, that's super. They know this guy gives, gives them everything he's got every time he goes out there. They like his spirit. They like his enthusiasm. He's one of the best cheerleaders on his club when he's not pitching. And swing one and one. Now, if he should try to look at this pitch when he swings out, he might have a chance. He's looking down to Mike Cubby, the third base coach, as he swings at this. Lima gets 
Jones is out on it. And it's caught in foul territory by Sean Casey for the second out. Time for another Fox Sports Net game break. We take you to the friendly confines of Wrigley Field where Dick Butkus bounces in the ceremonial first pitch. Butkus this week named the head coach of the new Chicago franchise of the XFL. And now we bring you to the top of the eighth inning. Score tied at two. Kevin Tappany on the mound. You just mentioned former Astro Bobby Abreu. He delivers it over the right field wall as the Cubs lose another close one to the Phillies. 3-2 Abreu's 13th of the year these standings is getting tighter a little bit tighter and the Cubs are on a nice run that ball of Rayo hit today went out of the stadium he crushed that but you know, this organization has come up with some real fine minor leaguers a couple of them are up in Seattle right now Freddie Garcia and Alama Carlos Guillen field 271,000 square feet of moving roof it takes approximately 12 to 20 minutes to open Jeff our American general this date in baseball history 24 years ago today the Milwaukee Brewers Hank Aaron hit the 755th and final home run of his major league career also <laughs> on this date in baseball history there is a young Jeff Torborg 30 years ago. This is actually Jeff's 1970 Dodgers baseball card. And on this date, in 1970, you caught your second no-hitter? Yes, it was a no-hitter by Bill Singer against the Phillies. As Griffey swings his fouls one back. The last out in that no-hitter was a pop-up by Byron Brown over in front of the Philly dugout. And Don Money left the bat on the on-deck circle, and I fell over it, but I caught it. Lucky for you. Yeah. 30 years ago today, July 20th, 1970, Bill Singer with Jeff Torborg behind the plate. No hit the Phillies, 5-0. The first no hitter you caught was actually a perfect game, Sandy Koufax. Yes. And then you caught one of Nolan Ryan's seven. Yes, his first one, that's right. with a blast foul into the upper deck in right field. So a one and two count on Griffey. Look at the people across the street watching the game now that the roof is opening. Up on the roof of the building behind left field. Our top flight XL 2000 home run leaders, players who have led both leagues in home runs. Ken Griffey Jr. led the American League the last three seasons. Griffey strikes out. Third strikeout for Lima. He's two behind Gary Sheffield, one behind Barry Bonds. Tied with Mark McGuire, third of the National League with 30. It's such a strange year he's having because his average is down. And you see he pulls off this ball. It's almost like he's trying to do so much that he's expanding the strike zone. The same thing we were talking about with Craig Biggio. He's trying. But Lima is really, when he needs it, has made the pitches. It's when he's just gotten a little up in the zone, he gets smacked. There's one he gets away with right there. Knocked down by the shortstop. Oh, he throws out the shot. 
just as we're saying that he gets one up in the zone and that's one of those balls that sails a long way but he gets away with it because Bichette comes over the top of it and hits it on the ground Lugo makes a nice play in recovering after dropping the ball but this is unique sitting in this stadium now with a roof opening looking across the street it's like Wrigley Field the people are, are up on a top of a building across the way here now do you think they've been up there for the entire game watching through the glass I guess they have been how about that that's a that's across the street no it's part of this building okay it looks like Wrigley where it's across the, the street it's really part of the building here Just underneath where those fans are standing, there is a 422-foot sign. <laughs> and we are told that window is the office window of the Astros owner, Drayton McLean. wonder if anybody's hit one off that building yet. Like the uh, warehouse behind Camden Yards where, in fact, Young Griffey smacked it around there in an all-star game. Casey, base hit right field off the glove of Biggio. So Casey extends his hitting streak to a career-high 13 games. Dante Bichette extended his streak to 14 earlier. Casey is such a great guy. This guy, he's so humble, and, he, and he's so friendly. He's hard to believe that he's real, but he can hit. Another one of those guys that came out of the Cleveland Indian organization, like Brian Giles and Burnett, who came by way of the Mets. Reach for Young takes ball one. This is the 13th time in 45 Astro home games that they have either opened or closed the roof during the course of the game. Dimitri Young, the deep right field, just shot of the running clock. The catch is made by Lance Berkman. And Casey is stranded on first. We head to the bottom of the sixth from Houston. Six watt Astros. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Houston Astros leading the Cincinnati Reds by the score of 6-1 to one on Fox Sports Net Baseball Thursday. And we are joined in the booth by the general manager of the Cincinnati Reds, Jim Bowden. Jim, first of all, uh, thanks for joining us. And obviously the first question, the big story around Cincinnati surrounds your shortstop, Barry Larkin. Well, obviously, you know, we want Barry Larkin to finish his career as a Cincinnati Red. Uh, we want number 11 to go from the uniform at home plate to the left field wall when he's done playing on the way to the Hall of Fame. Uh, we've tried to negotiate a contract. Uh, he has not moved off of his number, uh, which is $27.9 million, and uh, we cannot uh, come to an agreement at that number. So uh, if that doesn't work, uh, we'll try to trade him, and if he approves that, if not, he can become a free agent, and we'll deal with it at the end of the season. Jim, when I ask this question, I'm getting on my toes. I know you're not that tall, but you've done a terrific job in Cincinnati. Now, you just got some outstanding prospects for Denny Nagel. Was that a tough call to make that deal at this part of the season? Yeah, it's tough, but I think from a philosophical standpoint, when you're a small and middle market, we don't think we can compete uh, with the big boys, and if that's the case, we can't let a free agent walk and get nothing for him because then we can't win in the long run. Uh, and so the Yankees had paid over $4 million to the four prospects that we got. We like the prospects. We think in the long run, it's going to be a good trade for the Reds and we just have to swallow it as a bad trade for the next two and a half months. Well, you've done such a good job with getting other people's prospects and good young players and you really developed this club and brought it back. Now you got a new ballpark coming, so is it kind of a chess game trying to get back to where you want to be at this time, kind of treading water a little bit? Well, there's no question. I mean, it's tough when the Yankees' payroll is double yours. It's tough to compete with the big boys, but we have to do the best we can with what we have, and hopefully by the time we get to 2003, there'll be more revenue sharing. We'll have a new state with more revenues, and we'll be able to compete with the big boys again. Well, Jim, we really appreciate your being up here with us, and I know that uh, last year was an exciting year, but we hope things, and you're close. You're still close. You're still in it. I hope it can be a nice run down the stretch for you. Thanks very much. I appreciate it, Jeff. Jim Bowden, the general manager of the Cincinnati Reds, as Craig Biggio went off the bottom of the sixth inning with a single to left field, his second consecutive hit. Now 
Jeff Bagwell steps in. Bagwell has reached base three times tonight. He's walked twice. Singled and scored in the third inning. Blow it away from Scott Winchester. Ball one. You know, when I think about the job Jim Bowden has done, you know, I'm not so sure he gets enough credit. You know, so often happens with players and with general managers, when things don't go well, if somebody's trying to look for the blame, this guy has done a heck of a job over there and with a limited payroll. And that's a club that almost pulled off an unbelievable year last year. Reds last year went to that one-game playoff with the Mets. Were beaten by Al Leiter. They finished a game and a half behind the Astros in the standings. Foul back behind third base. Jeff Bagwell in select company along with Cal Ripken and Jose Canseco. Three active players who will be named rookie of the year and most valuable player. I want you to look at that picture. <laughs> Check what he had on his chin during spring training at the beginning of this year. Looked like a mountain man with that thing on, but boy, what a player this guy has been. Came out of the University of Hartford, was in the Red Sox organization. And you can see the throw to first, thinking that maybe trying to extend the lead. You know, no lead in most ballparks is safe, but especially from what the Astros have seen this year here, the ball jumps here, so they might try to run. Out off the mask of Tomlinson. You can hear it up here in the booth. See, that's one of those hockey masks. You see probably kind of smiling. That was a deflection type of uh, foul tip. The old mask, if you get hit straight around the chin, it's like getting punched in the chin. You got hit up in the up in the forehead, as you can see Eddie probably shaking it. It used to knock your, your head back a little bit. These masks that Charlie O'Brien, the outstanding catcher for so many years, designed when he was with Toronto deflects the foul tips a little bit. You can see Tobins even wears a, a regular cloth hat under it. Vigio goes. There's a throw down to second. Vigio steals his 12th base. Now that's what I was thinking early in the game that maybe Larry Durker with this Astro team, they've got to make some things happen. Even they're up in the count. This was a terrific jump by, by Biggio. He has such a jump. Watch this. One, two, three, probably five steps before Winchester delivered the ball. So that was tough. Tobbins, he made the, the play as close as he could. He just grabbed and threw it down there. But look at that helmet. Look at the size of the helmet. That's the one that makes me laugh. Besides the ball of pine tar. players are so superstitious. I bet he doesn't let that equipment man clean that helmet from year to year. Now it's foul, so the count remains two and two. Getting back to the uh, Barry Larkin situation. Reds general manager Jim Bowden echoing the statements of CEO John Allen. Jim came right out and said, we want Barry Larkin to finish his Hall of Fame career in a red uniform, but not at three years, 27.9 million. That's understandable. Just think you get Griffey and, and Larkin on the same team and add up what, what Larkin was looking for and what kind of payroll is that for just two guys? Yeah, two outstanding players. I'm not knocking that at all, and I know what the market value has been. But you get to a certain situation, and, and economics, you know, it, you have to think about it. Larkin, like Griffey this year, took less money that he could have made elsewhere in order to stay home in Cincinnati during his last contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. And he says this time, he does not even want much more than what he calls fair market value. He would like to stay in Cincinnati. Well, that's probably right. You know, when you look around and see what some of these other players are making, and this guy is an, an all-star and has been for a long time, 15 years at the major league level. For the first 30-30 shortstop. MVP of the league. I mean, this guy is a terrific player. But then it becomes so much in economics, you know, and it, it, it's too bad, you know, because for the fans, they don't want to hear economics. This is a game for them. They enjoy it. And 
and the managers don't really want to hear about it either. It's the general managers and the owners that have to worry about the payroll. Here's Lance Berkman, who drove in three runs in the fourth inning, a bases clearing double to left center. Berkman also walked and reached on an error. First and second, nobody out. Astros leading the Reds 6-1. Shallow center. Murphy, one away. It's amazing, Jeff, that the Reds roster includes three players who attended the same high school. Murphy, Larkin, and Mike Bell, who has not yet seen action in the majors. As soon as Mike sees action in a major league game with the Reds, they will become the first three-generation family to all play with the same team. I'll tell you what, that makes me feel so old to see Mike Bell. Of course, he looks just like Buddy. When I was managing the Indians back in the 70s, 77 and 78, Michael Bell and David Bell and Ricky Bell would all were all playing as little kids in the clubhouse. Marcia Salou into center. Buddy played for you in Cleveland with the Indians. Buddy was a co-captain with Wayne Kuyper with the Indians. And boy, what a special family they are. My wife used to kid about Gloria. Gloria did all the batting practice throwing. When the kids were little, of course, Buddy was playing. What a patient mother, and what a great family. And Buddy's doing a terrific job out in Colorado. They hit that one stretch. What did they lose? Ten in a row. Was, did it add up to 11? Buddy probably felt like it was 31. But he's done a terrific job in Colorado. He did a great job last year with the U.S. Pan American team. And the Rockies are still only five and a half out of the NL West, despite that 11-game losing streak. Mm -hmm. Hidalgo to Holbert in his last at bat. Pops it up, foul territory. And with the roof open, the wind playing tricks on Chris Steins, but he makes the catch. And the Astros strand two in the sixth. Kenny Albert, Jeff Torborg, back at Enron Field in Houston on Fox Sportsnet Baseball Thursday. As we move to the seventh inning, the roof is now open, and Jeff, this is the third different ballpark you have come to through the years here in Houston. Oh, baby, look at this one. That was old Cole Stadium. That was the hottest place I think I've ever been. It had the biggest mosquitoes I think I've ever seen. Back in 1964, they had a meningitis outbreak here, so when we were playing there, they constantly sprayed around the field. We thought we were going to die from the fumes. But that's the ballpark where Ernie Banks said, a good day for two, and they and they carried him out on a stretcher in the second game from the heat. He meant two innings. Yeah, I think he did. Now, this area up here is where they were building the Astrodome. See, the Colts Stadium was in what turned out to be the parking lot for the Astrodome. And the Astrodome opened, of course, in 1965. Boy, was that hot. No air conditioning, just fans blowing around 100 degree heat. The temperature has been in the 90s this week here in Houston. But they have opened the roof here at Enron Field with the Astros leading 6-1. to one. Bottom of the order for the Reds. Eddie Taubensy, one for two with an RBI. Oh, there's that real nice changeup, which we haven't seen as much of as we normally see when Lima's really successful. It means he's up in the count and he can go to it, but he's got a great changeup. Jose Lima, who at one point this season lost a club record 13 consecutive decisions. Taubenzi. Ground ball to the second baseman, Vigio. Throws out his former teammate. For the first out, here are the Reds' seventh. Coming up after baseball, the National Sports Report on Fox Sports Net. Carl Everett suspended 10 games. He appealed the suspension. 
Randy Johnson on the mound for the Diamondbacks. David Wells looking for his 16th victory for the Blue Jays tonight. And Tiger Woods looking to complete his Grand Slam at the British Open. That's all coming up after the game on the National Sports Report. Ball one to Juan Castro. Mike Bell is on deck. So he will make his first Major League appearance here in the top half of the seventh inning for the Cincinnati Reds. And the Bells will become the first three-generation baseball family to play for the same team. There have been two other three-generation baseball families, the Boones, Aaron Boone on the disabled list for the Reds, brother Brett in San Diego. And the Hairstons, Sam, Jerry Sr., and Jerry Jr., but the Bells will become the first in which members of all three generations play for the same team. That's interesting. There's another brother, too. We talked about David up with Seattle doing a great job there. And there's ball four. So Mike Bell will come and play. Now, Mike, Mike Bell came up from the Texas organization originally. And before Bell's at bat, Time now for another Fox Sportsnet game break. Braves and Marlins rained out last night. Quinville today. This is game one. Marlins leading 3-2. Top of the sixth. Javi Lopez rips a shot down the third baseline. A double scoring Chipper Jones. Tying the score at three. Braves add a couple more. And defeat the Marlins by the score of 5-3. Win number 11 for Tom Glavin. So the Major League debut... Mike Bell, he played 803 games in the minor leagues. 803. Well, I remember when he first, he was taken very high in the draft by the Texas Rangers. But he's had some bad injuries. He was banged up last year, broke a hand in the Mets organization. But he originally signed with Texas. A quick trade to the Angels, and then he went to the over to the Mets organization and was uh, broke a hand trying to make a catch around the third base dugout last year at AAA. Bell gets a piece of it, stays alive at 0-2. I was also going to say that there's another brother, Ricky, who is playing for the Dodger organization. So conceivably, there might be three Bell brothers playing at the major league level at the same time. Father Buddy managing the Rockies. Yes, how about that? Mike Bell strikes out in his first major league at bat, but becomes a part of history. A little anxious in this at bat. He swung so hard. Now this ball is a good foot outside, but he's he's wanting it so badly. That first at bat in the major leagues, boy, unless you get a, a mistake pitch, is a tough one. Steins 0 for 3. Wind out to the third baseman Spires his last two times up. For the runner on third both times. This time lines a base hit into center field. Now oh, this was a bullet out over the plate. Stein starts with an open stance, dives back into the plate, and he hit a rocket right back to the mound. It got Jose Lima's attention when it went through there. See how he steps from the outside part of the plate toward the plate. And then he gets the ball up out of the plate, and it's a rocket back to the box. Look at this. Remember how close that pitcher is, and this ball's going back past Jose. And when it goes by his head, boy, he's glad it didn't come through there a little lower. Barry Larkin. Larkin 0 for 3 tonight. Runners on first and second, two away. There's last year's National League manager. 
batters of the year, Jack McKeon. What a job he did with his club. I was talking to him the night before the game. He said he went out there and let those guys play. He said this was a, a team that knew how to play. He let the coaches coach. He said when he was a younger manager, he tried to control everything. But last year he said, uh-uh, let's let the guys in their areas of expertise. He's got an outstanding coaching staff. Let them do the job. Jack said he had more fun last year than he's ever had in pro ball. And last year was his 50th year in professional baseball. Mm -hmm. Strike call to the inside corner, three and one on Barry Larkin. And while McKeon was named manager of the year of the National League last year, Larry Durker won the award two years ago. Mm -hmm. Very deserving both times. You know, there were a lot of people that snickered when they brought down Larry from the broadcast booth. But the thing he knew was pitching. And he knew the feeling of what it was to be a pitcher. And besides that, he hadn't been away from the game. He'd been in the booth for 18 years watching with oh, not quite. You never have your finger on the pulse of the team unless you're in the dugout in uniform. But Larry's a very bright guy. And he came right in and didn't profess to be smarter than he was. He said, I, I'm a little nervous. He said, I never gave signs before. But obviously it worked for him. Would you ever consider a return from the booth? This is too much fun, Kenny. Going down there, that's a tough job down there. This is fun. It's fun down there when you win. It's when you lose that it's so difficult. You know, you take it home with you and people say, oh, no. You leave it at the ballpark. That's baloney. It's like 25 extended family members of your team, and you care about them, and you want them to do well. It is a tough job. Larkin reaches out, punches this one into the right field corner. It's a fair ball. Coming in to score is Castro. Steins crosses the plate. Uh, Steins is going to have to go back because it became a ground rule double, so he has to go back. And Larkin just dropped this ball down the right field line. And this is what he can... And when Barry Larkin is swinging the bat well, he does this. Now, maybe they called it fan interference. I couldn't see in the corner. If it was fan interference and you place the runners, the umpires place the runners where they think where they think the runner should be. So that's probably what happened. If it's a ground rule double, that runner should not score from first base. If it's a fan interference and a fan reaches over, then the home plate umpire can place the runners where he thinks they're going to be. The umpire called fan interference, and if it is fan interference, McElhaney's asking him to, it was a fan interference call. When the umpires put their hands together. Nope, now they're telling and they're saying they're bringing them back and it bounced over. See, that's, I couldn't see the corner, but when it goes down in that area, if it's staying interference, the home plate umpire places the runner where they should be. If it bounces into the seats, ground rule double, the runner from first would not score. He's only allowed the base he's going to in one more. So your initial inclination was correct. Steins must return to third. Yeah, see, here goes that ball down the right field line. Yeah, it bounced right up. Oh, it bounced over. Sure, that's ground rule double. That is not fan interference. Fan interference would have been if they reached over. And that will be all for Jose Lima, who receives a nice ovation from the crowd here at Enron Field. Tips his cap. And after going six and two thirds, he leaves with a six two lead. Jose Lima exits with the Astros on top, 6-2. 28-year-old right-hander Mark Valdez, former Marlin and Expo, comes on in relief for the Astros. Well, this guy was a career win leader at the University of Florida and made the Olympic team coming back from surgery. This is a tough spot to come in, but he has pitched very well for them. 3.38 ERA, it's his 24th appearance. You look and see what the league has hit against him. 304 means they put the, he's put the ball, had him put the ball in play. See, this is one of the things that people don't think much about normally, and that is Griffey has to learn all these new pitchers in the National League. Even though there's crossover, there's interleague play, he's not used to what a lot of these pitchers will do when the game's on the line or when they're ahead in the count. So he's up there kind of expanding his strike zone a little bit.
feet into the left field corner. Foul. So Griffey heads back to the plate. Runners on second and third. They did send Steins back to third base. Larkin is on second following his RBI double. And it's got to be a little difficult to be the guy pitcher of record who's just come out of the ball game. It's I tell you, it's much tougher sitting and watching than trying to perform. The motor is always running. <laughs> out Ken Griffey looking with two on and two out as we head to the bottom of the seventh with the Astros leading 6-2 let's take a look at what's coming your way tonight on the National Sports Report for that we take you to the Fox Network Center we'll come on to pitch for the Cincinnati Reds here in the bottom of the seventh his first major league appearance since April of last season Wolders the fourth Reds pitcher they trail the Astros 6-2 our McDonald's game summary. Jose Lima allows two runs in six and two-thirds. Lance Berkman has driven in three of the Astros' runs. This will be second inning. Bill Spires. RBI single to center. Scott Williamson not very happy. The Reds starter returning home. And then in the fourth, Lance Berkman. A three-run double into the gap in left center. And then in the fifth inning, Scott Winchester. Well, first, this is Eddie Tobbins. He's one scoring single. And at the bottom of the inning, here it is. Scott Winchester on the mound. Richard Hidalgo takes him deep. His 27th home run of the season. So the Astros with a 6-2 lead. Mark Wolders, who has gone through the well chronicled problems over the last couple of years, the anxiety disorder, and then the torn ligament in his right elbow. Former closer for the Atlanta Braves. This would be a great story if he could make it back. Boy, he had great stuff. Remember the years he had with the Braves, 95, 6, and 7. He had 25, 39, and 33 saves, respectively. All you can remember is that one big hanging slider in the World Series against the Yankees. Jim Leyritz popped it out of the ballpark. The Braves had a two-run lead. Hey. Now the first pitch from Wallers is a called strike. Molesky, one for three, struck out twice, doubled in the fifth inning. Can you remember the stuff this guy had? 100 mile an hour fastball, good slider. Strike two. He went through personal problems and his breakup of his marriage and everything went haywire before him and the surgery and elbow. Boy, you'd love to see a guy like this make it back. First two pitches back, ball strikes. What would that do for his confidence? Wow, did you see the bottom fall out of that? That's his uh, split finger. That was an outstanding pitch. He looked completely in control. There were three in a row. Watch the bottom fall out of this pitch. Whew. The lack of rotation stays on top, stays together, doesn't fly open. Now a call strike to Julio Lugo. So four pitches, four strikes from Wolers. We called yesterday from AAA Louisville. Ball one. And the one he misses with misses by about three inches. This guy was a dominant closer for the years we were talking about, 95 through 97 for the Braves. And then he just lost it. One and two. Second consecutive strikeout. He's thrown seven pitches, 
six strikes. All right, that's a nice start. Another look at it. We saw the good hard fastball, and here's that downer. This, it's, oh, it's a different type of split. When you look at that grip in his glove, it looked like almost a fosh split between the big finger and the ring finger, not between the index finger and the big finger. There's a cross seam of fastball. It's interesting to see the grip. The pitcher Valdez swings at the first pitch and bounces back to Wallers. One, two, three inning in his first major league appearance in over a year. Mark Wollers retired the side of the bottom of the seventh inning for the Reds. And who was the first teammate to give Wollers a pat on the back as he headed into the dugout? Barry Larkin, the captain. That's what a captain does. And that means so much. I tell you what, you have no idea what that makes him feel like. It's almost like welcome. Welcome. Nice going. That's what you needed. That's what we needed. That's good stuff. So the Reds will certainly be able to take a positive out of this game, even if they do not come back. They trail by four runs. Wollers in his Reds debut. Struck out the first two batters he faced. Retired all three in the inning. here in the eighth inning. The chef behind in the count, 0-2. One ball, two strikes. The chef, Casey, and Young. The Reds have won eight of their last 11. They trail the Cardinals, who lost today by only five and a half games in the NL Central. Reds only four out in the wild card. And they are five and two since trading away their ace, Denny Nagel. Mm. Harnish, former Astro, has pitched back-to-back -back complete games. The first Red to do so since David Wells back in 1995. Well, there's Pete. Boy, this guy's a warrior. The only problem is he's got a bad shoulder. He keeps coming back and rehabbing. He does with a lot of guts. There's a jam shot. Boy, that's one of those that gets in the kitchen. And the catch is made by the catcher, Molesky. Jeff, one week from tonight on uh, Fox Sportsnet Baseball Thursday, you and I will be in St. Louis for Mark McGuire and the Cardinals against the Diamondbacks. Some of you will see the Red Sox and the Athletics. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sportsnet. McGuire on the DL now, but is scheduled to return before next Thursday. Here's Sean Casey, one for three tonight. The complete game shutout. Pitched by Harnish last night. The first ever complete game shutout here at Enron. Mm -hmm. Interesting, you know, Harnish is such a gamer and says we call him a warrior. And he had pitched so successfully here as an Astro. And for him to make it back, you know, they were talking a year ago that they wanted to operate on his arm and he didn't want it done, so he tried to rehab it without surgery. This guy is a tough guy, boy. But you can only do so much unless you're, you know, physically able to do it. You know, I'm impressed with what I've seen Valdez. He's throwing the ball hard, and he's locating. He struck Griffey out with that fastball inside. He jammed Bichette with that fastball inside. There's Lima still going. He hasn't gone in to change his shirt or anything. He's just... 
guess when you've only won two this year, you stick around. I think he does anyway. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure this year is unique for him. Now, you and I talked to him before the game. You wouldn't have known that he had lost that many games, would you? strikes on Casey who's shaken up. We've seen a number of guys this year who have fouled balls off their feet and ended up on the disabled list with a broken foot. Matt Williams was one of them this year. Here's a swing. Ow. That looked like it was above the foot, maybe up around right where his pants. Yeah, oh yeah, that's on the shin. Moises Alou earlier fouled a pitch off his shin mm. after he was hit by a pitch in the hand in his first at bat. going to be hurting tomorrow. He had, after the game is over, he'll have his hand in ice and then a big ice pack on his leg. But this hit on the front of the shin, if you just grab your shin and rub your finger up and your hand up and down there, there is no meat there. And when you get hit there, that thing will just really swell. give him a leg guard but it's a little late <laughs> but actually it's a good idea because invariably when you hit yourself there it's like there's a bullseye on it you'll hit there again I wonder if this leg guard will make it feel any better it might because if you pull it tight it gives it a little support but I'm telling you that hurt you know when you if you've never done that you can kind of smile about it but man that does hurt when you foul a ball off down there and if you hit on the top of your foot, the foul tip hits on the top of your foot, you feel like your arch is falling underneath it. So Casey will hang in there, full count, one out, on the top of the eighth inning. With the Reds trailing 6-2. Do you hear that fan yelling, get in the box for crying out loud. That's a guy that never did this before. This hurts. It may have been Andre Robertson. <laughs> you and I yeah. saw the former Yankee infielder outside the ballpark prior to the game tonight. It's amazing. Andre Robertson had that terrible car accident uh, after a Yankee game one night, and his whole career went downhill after that. He was a, one of the best young-looking shortstops, the best good-looking young shortstops, I should say, in the game. He's 42, he told me. That he still looks like he's 22, doesn't he? Casey walks a one-out walk here in the eighth. Time now for another Fox Sports Net game break. Our West Coast game tonight on Baseball Thursday. Masato Yoshi on the mound for the Rockies facing Gary Sheffield, who connects deep to left center, his 33rd of the year, which leads the majors and the Dodgers out on top of the Rockies by the score of 1-0. 33rd home run for Gary Sheffield. Two ahead of Barry Bonds, and the Dodgers and Giants will get together this weekend at Dodger Stadium. Strike called on Dimitri Young. Dimitri one for three tonight. That uh, Gary Sheffield story is a great story. He really has a re renewed interest in the game. He just is enjoying playing now. A couple years ago, he was talking about retiring. He wasn't having any fun anymore. Second. Vigio. 4-6-3. The Astros turn two. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. 6-2 Houston. Astros leading the Reds 6-2. We spoke with Houston manager Larry Durker about the transition from the broadcast booth. We don't bunt very much, and we don't pitch out very much. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've come to the conclusion that those things weren't as effective as a broadcaster. You know, I didn't come to that conclusion by the time I was finished playing. And uh, also with uh, things like the hit and run, you know, we don't hit and run very much. And 
looking back and studying the history of the game, I know that when that play originated, it was dead ball, you know, 1900 to 1920. Well, that's interesting. You really manage according to your team. His team was not one that had to really force the issue offensively because they had that solid lineup. Bill Spires swings at the first pitch. Pops out in foul territory to the third baseman, Chris Steins, one away. But you know, it's interesting what Larry was saying. A lot of people have debated the usefulness of giving up an out an inning, like sacrificing. And also some people said what he said about the hit and run. The hit and run is giving yourself up. you got to hit the ball. But that comes with teams that have to put the ball in play that don't have much power, you know, and try to force the issue. But Larry came in and didn't try to do too much. The temptation was, would be as a new manager, to try to do too much. He didn't do that. He let the club play. Here's Biggio. Larkin behind second, throws him out. Wollers has thrown 10 pitches has retired five Houston Astros. Eight pitches in the seventh. Two pitches, two outs. Here are the eight. Well, when he was really struggling, he could go out there and throw this many pitches to the first two hitters or first three hitters and not throw a strike. That's when he was struggling, but this is great. You know, some pitchers later on who had been strikeout pitchers find out they can get people out and they don't have to strike them out if you make them hit your pitch. Both Astros this inning have gone after the first pitch. Bagwell takes ball one. And you see, when you have a big power pitcher the way Wallers was, and if you miss and you miss down like that, not bad. One and one. He's not overthrowing now. If you remember when he was struggling, it was terrible to watch. He'd bounce balls on the grass in front of the plate. He'd throw the ball over the mat, over the umpire's head, off the backstop. He just lost all field. Off speed pitch high and in, two and one. That's what that was. That was that uh, split finger that he tried to, on a one-one pitch, try to drop in there and fool Bagwell. Straight away center. Griffey on the warning track. A couple of steps up. Towels Hill makes the catch. Two perfect innings for Mark Wollers. We move to the ninth in Houston. With the Astros leading the Reds 6-2. Our Nissan plays of the game. We take you back to the bottom of the seventh. And Mark Wollers in his return. His first major league appearance since April of 99. Retires the Astros in order on just eight pitches. Welcome back to the majors. Mark Wollers. That is a great story. Losing by four runs, smiles all around in the Reds dugout. Great human interest story as Wolers returns to the majors. That is, everybody in that dugout came up to him. They are so happy for him. Boy, is that meaningful. Well, there is Richard Hidalgo, who moves to right field from center for the Astros. Replacing Lance Berkman, Glenn Parker now in the game. He is the center fielder. And the new pitcher here in the ninth, Octavio Dotel. One and five on the season. He started 16 games. This is fifth appearance out of the bullpen. Came over from the Mets along with Roger Cedeno in exchange for Mike Hampton and Derek Bell. Well, this kid has a good arm. He's a young kid. He's only 24. With the Mets last year, he was eight and three. 85 strikeouts in 85 innings. Well, he's still got the strikeout ability because this year he's got the 95, 97 strikeouts in 95 innings. But in between, he's given up a lot of hits. You can see he throws from a low arm angle. And tendency is to be a little wild, but he's got a heck of a future. He's 
kind of got a slinging motion. And the question will be, is he going to be a starter or will he be a closer or, or a reliever? That's something that the Astros will have to decide. Now three and one on Taubenzi. Dotel had started 16 games. He's been in four games out of the bullpen. This is his fifth. Now back full count. Sometimes that happens with your best laid plans. You're thinking, well, this guy is going to be started. That's what Jerry Hunsaker thought of the general manager bringing him here. But maybe he might be the guy coming out of the bullpen because what's Billy Wagner going to do? Billy Wagner's lost for the season, had elbow surgery. There's Jerry. Gonna have to make some decisions. They're not sure how Billy's going to respond coming back. Thomas is called out on strikes. One away. In the Reds' night coming up momentarily. Following the Reds and the Astros, the National Sports Report, Carl Everett suspended 10 games. He has appealed the suspension. Randy Johnson on the mound for the Diamondbacks this afternoon. David Wells looking for his 16th win. And Tiger Woods opening round play at the British Open. It's all coming up on the National Sports Report. Here's Juan Castro. Who takes ball one. The executive producers of Fox Sports that are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for Baseball Thursday is Larry Myers. And the head of field operations, Andrea Jenkins. Foul back. One and one on Castro. Tonight's game produced by Tom Hewitt. Directed by Jeff Mitchell. Great job by the rest of our crew as Jose Lima is still talking <laughs> in the Astros dugout. Thanks to Mark Allsmeyer, Rick Tugman, Gary Nicholas, Jim Pels, Terry Sanders, Bruce Levine, and Tom Thomas in the truck. Kimberly Lamb, Bill Bidrow up here in the booth. One and two on Castro. Boy, did you see that nasty pitch? That was from down alongside, and he painted the outside part to a right-hand hitter. That's nearly unhittable. Strikeout for Dotel. Reds are down to their final out. And the person of pitch hitter, Michael Tucker. Wow, that is really tough from that arm angle. See from the side where he throws the ball. See, instead of over the top, he comes from like we call a, a low three quarters, maybe, or three quarters. That's not overhand, it's from the side. And he gets this whip action. He's got to be very difficult to see for a right-handed hitter. Michael Tucker, the pinch hitter. Batting 276. He's 4 of 17 as a pinch hitter this year. Reds head home following the game tonight for a weekend series with the Diamondbacks. While the Astros will host the St. Louis Cardinals starting tomorrow. That's what it's going to be for the Astros the rest of the year is getting their act back in gear, but they're going to be the spoilers. They can really make some things happen in the division. You know, they are a type of immense pride on this team. I mean, they haven't won three consecutive division titles without a lot of pride. Tucker fouls attack. Two and two. So the Astros one strike away. Three on the ice for Lance Corkman. Richard Hidalgo, a solo homer. Jose Lima will pick up his second victory in his last three starts after losing 13 consecutive decisions. The Reds will fall back to six games behind the Cardinals in the NL Central. The 2-2. He got it. Pops out the side and the ninth. Tucker caught looking. And the Houston Astros are victorious. They break a three-game losing streak. They split the two-game series with the Reds. Cincinnati won last night's game 4-0. Astros come back tonight and defeat the Reds by the score of 6-2. Jose Lima the win. He is now 3 and 13. Scott Williamson takes the loss. Williamson now 3 and 7. 
two eight one for the Reds, six eight and zero for the Astros. This weekend on Fox Saturday Baseball, most of you will see the Mets and the Braves, others the Giants and Dodgers, plus other regional action. Coverage begins at one Eastern and Pacific. Check local listings. Next week on Fox Sports Net Baseball Thursday, Cardinals host the Diamondbacks, Red Sox, and the A's. Check local listings. Stay right here. The National Sports Report is next. Carl Everett suspended. Tiger Woods in action at the British Open. Also check out your regional sports report. For Jeff Torbor and our entire crew, Kenny Albert says so long from Houston. You've been watching Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net.